Hi, it's Dwyer uh, from Dwyer Crime Channel here on YouTube, right? YouTube account Esquire777. Now on that site, I've made the case that some people who have been convicted have been wrongfully convicted. But I've also made the case that some people who many people believe are innocent are actually guilty. Now, let me say this. We all love our friends. I know I love mine, right? And we all have friends from different backgrounds with different beliefs, right? So maybe you're like me. Maybe you've been caught out there. These folks are good people. They're good people, right? They love, you know, people around them and, you know, they have families and friends who really love them, right? You love them. So you're out there at a party you're hanging around some of your crew, right? And uh, you're caught out there in conversation, right? Let's say there's the person who believes uh, in the U.S. government's job numbers, right? Let's say you're talking to someone who believes in Bigfoot, right? You're having another conversation and, you know, the person believes that O.J. Simpson was framed, right? Then you have the people who believe Hillary Clinton when she says that the millions of dollars she has received from Wall Street has not affected a single vote she has made in her political career, right? Then you have the group that believes Donald Trump can build a wall and that that wall is going to keep out illegal immigrants. Now, you know these people, right? You're at the party, you're thinking Sam Adams, and many of these people are talking about Stephen Avery, right? They believe Stephen Avery is innocent, that he didn't kill Teresa Hall back, right? Many of them are here, you know, commenting on my videos, God bless everyone, right? They believe that Stephen Avery was framed by them, right? We'll use the word them. So you're caught in a conversation at a party and you're listening to a very complicated, very long explanation on how the evidence doesn't quite point to Stephen Avery's guilt, right? The person has explanations on, you know, the car key, right? On the bullet, right? On the burning burn barrel, right on what's found in the burn pit on the timeline they have a long litany of explanations about how the evidence can be pieced together to show that Stephen Avery was framed so this video is for those of us who believe that Stephen Avery's guilty believe that the conversation is really far afield right and who need to come up with a diplomatic strategy, a series of questions to kind of steer the conversation back toward reality, to actually make the conversation meaningful and worthwhile. So here are some polite questions to ask to slow down the conversation when you're caught in a room with someone who has a very long explanation about why the pieces of evidence don't quite fit together and how, you know, Stephen Avery must have been framed, right? And these questions are relevant, right? The first question is, well, <clears throat> who killed Teresa Hallback, right? It's a real basic question, right? How did the framers, the people who framed Stephen Avery, right? Because the person believes Stephen Avery was framed. How did the framers get her body? Now, let's just think it through, right? There are many people who believe the cops framed Stephen Avery. I'm guessing many people watching this video right now are nodding their heads saying, that's right, the cops framed Stephen Avery. All right. Okay, so how exactly did the cops come across the body? 
Is there an unreported crime scene someplace? Right? Even my kid has some ideas here. Right? Well, let me just say this. Did they come across an unreported crime scene, something that's not mentioned in any police report, where they walk in and they find that Teresa Hallback has been brutally murdered and is laid out at a crime scene, and then they say, you know what, rather than solve this crime, Right? We're going to cover up the crime scene. Right, We can't have this blood all over the place. We're going to cover up this crime scene and we're going to go blame Stephen Avery. Right? Did they just stumble upon her body and her car? Right, Because the RAV4 is part of the situation here. Right, The police find a RAV4 on Stephen Avery's property and it's been covered up and it has blood evidence in it. Did the cops actually stumble upon a dead Teresa Hallback? Did she die of natural causes? Right? Did they stumble upon a dead Teresa Hallback and her car? Right? Did they hit the jackpot on that and then come up with the bright idea of framing Stephen Avery? Right? Or is this darker? Is this a situation where the cops are so upset by Stephen Avery's lawsuit. They're so upset by the possibility of Stephen Avery getting 30 odd million dollars that they decide, other than call me right now in the middle of a video, that they decide to kill an innocent woman to frame an innocent man. If you're one of those who believes that the cops are involved in the frame-up, please, in the comment section to this video, because this video is really about the comment section, please tell us how, right, the cops came across her body. Now, let's say you're one of those who believes that the family did it, right? The theory is that some family member is so jealous of Stephen Avery because Stephen Avery is looking at a 30 odd million dollar windfall, right? That this family member, completely deluded, who thinks that Stephen Avery, who was wrongly imprisoned, right, for more than a decade, who was in prison while this person was out living their lives, this person feels that Stephen Avery has had it too good, right? And they decide, you know what? I don't like the idea of a guy in my family getting this windfall. I'm going to frame him for this murder, right? Those are the two theories that I've heard the most on, right? That the police did the framing or that family did the framing. Now, again, if family did the framing, how did they get Teresa Hallback's body, right? Is the contention that the family killed Teresa Hallback? Or is the contention that Teresa Hallback just happened to be laying there on the side of the road and then someone said, oh wow, today's my lucky day. Right, let me go frame Uncle Stephen who I'm jealous of. Now let's take this further, right? Because we always hear Avery's framed, we never hear how the crime's done. So let's ask the next question at the cocktail party. You're there, someone's talking about Dassey, they're talking about, you know, bad interrogation, they're talking about, you know, bullet found later, and all this other stuff. So let's just say, you're there and you're listening to this frame stuff. Just ask a simple question. How many people are involved in the frame up, right? If it's the cops, because we know the more people involved in a frame up, the more vulnerable that frame up is, right? Every conspiracy is only as good as its weakest link, right? So, if the cops frame Stephen Avery, how many cops are involved? Is it one rogue cop? Is it reasonable to believe that one rogue cop could stumble upon Teresa Hallback's body or kill Teresa Hallback, right? Cremate the body, get by Stephen Avery's dog, who's by the burn pit, right? Keep in mind, the dog doesn't know 
some cop, right? You're not, you're not family. You're not a Stephen Avery friend, right? So the cop would have to then get by Stephen Avery's dog, dump the body in the burn pit, be unnoticed, right? Unnoticed by, you know, the neighbors. Keep in mind, Stephen Avery lives close to family. His sister literally lives next door. Right? This is a neighborhood where people know each other. Stephen Avery has employees. Everyone knows Stephen Avery lives in this trailer. Right? So the cop has to show up with either the body or the bones for the body, get by the dog, put it in the burn pit. <laughs> right? Is that what people believe happened? Also, if he shows up with a body, do you think it's remotely reasonable that he then burns the body in Stephen Avery's burn pit without anybody seeing this stranger start a fire? Right? Also, if it's a cop, because we know the theory so involved, right? Body, you have to reduce it to bones. You have to drop the, you know, bones in the burn pit. You have to get by the dog. You have to, you know, drop off the car. You have to try to cover the car. You have to smear blood in the car, right? Is the cop on duty when presumably there'd be a record of how they're spending their time? Maybe someone could say, hey, I was at that crime scene. I didn't see Officer Joe at that crime scene. What was Joe really doing, right? Or is the cop off duty? Because who has time for all of this, right? So is it one rogue cop or are we dealing with multiple cops, right? And when exactly do they form the conspiracy? Does one cop find Teresa Hallback's body then call up the other cop and say, Bob, you're not going to believe this, but I have the perfect way to frame Stephen Avery. Right? Forget about how this innocent woman actually died. Forget about actually investigating her death. Right? Let's just spend, you know, come in on this deal with me. Let's get back at Stephen Avery by taking this body, burning it, putting it in his burn pit. Now let's talk about family. Right? Let's say it's not a cop. How many family members are involved in framing Stephen Avery? Do they just happen to stumble upon a body? Is this a situation where, you know, two guys find a body and then they say, hey, isn't this the woman who was just visiting Uncle Stephen? And of course, these just happen to be the two guys who are jealous of Stephen because after years in prison, he's now looking at a possible windfall, right? Well, if you believe it's family, Here's a big question for you. How do they get blood from the police file of Stephen Avery's prior case? Isn't the theory that the blood in the vehicle is blood that's actually from a vial from Stephen Avery's prior case? So what's the deal? Let's make up a fictional character. Is Uncle Ronnie so out to get Stephen Avery that he's somehow able to slip by law enforcement at the police station to get to the blood vial? And he's savvy enough to know how to siphon blood out of the blood vial, put the blood vial back, and then, of course, you know, go with the car to the crime scene, smear blood inside the car, leave the car there, and then dump the body, or dump the body, then smear the car? How many members of your family do you think would even try to go to a police station and get into the evidence locker room and then know to how to find Stephen Avery's several year old earlier criminal case and then have the sophistication to actually remove blood out of it and then smear blood in the car, right? And of course, think about it, if it's family, then the people there would know the person, right? So think about it. If it's a cop and the cop's planting the car on Stephen Avery's property, right? If I'm on the property and I see the cop, you know, from several feet away, I won't know who that person is. I would say, oh, gee, what's that guy doing? 
But if it's a family member, right, you're going to look over there and say, what the hell is Cousin Bill up to? What the hell is Uncle Ronnie up to? Right? You're going to remember, I mean, understand, if your family, people know you there because you're around family. So as you try to frame, you know, Stephen Avery, other people would be able to make a pretty conclusive identification. There's greater risk. Let's also talk about timing. How does anyone, police or family, get to Reese's camera, her PDA, her cell phone, into the burn barrel by 5.20 p.m.? When Robert Fabian, see, you know, smells plastic and sees smoke coming out of the burn barrel, right? Think about it. This is before Teresa Hallback is missing. How would the cops know to do that, right? How would they, right? Let's also talk about the technology risks. Understand, this isn't the 1960s and the Kennedy conspiracy, right? This is a cell phone era. Everyone around you now has cameras. You don't even have phone booths anymore in big cities, right? Because everyone has a cell phone. I'm going to sign off in a couple of seconds here to take care of my daughter. But let me just say this. If you believe the cops did this, right? How many cops do you know who would risk their entire career trying to return Teresa Hallback's car to Stephen Avery's property, knowing that anyone with a cell phone camera could take a photo showing somebody in the car other than Stephen Avery, right? If you're going to dump the body into the burn pit, how confident are you? Forget the dog. How confident are you in a relatively open field Right? There are no buildings above the burnt pit. Right? This is not an enclosed area. How confident would you be that you'd be able to do it without anyone taking any kind of photo of you? Right? Understand this conspiracy would have to be pulled off without anyone leaving a trace. Right? If it's family, how sophisticated is the family going to be? Right? If it's the cops, wouldn't they be risking it all? Right? Anyway, that's how I see it. Hopefully, you're able to diplomatically diffuse the situation at the party. Hopefully, you're not stuck there. Hearing a lot of theories about how, you know, people could frame Stephen Avery that don't have enough realism to be taken seriously. Anyway... Let me hear your theory of the case. Rather than say Stephen Avery's framed, right? Just tell us how the crime was committed, right? Tell us how many people are involved in the conspiracy. Is it one rogue family member who somehow can get a, you know, blood sample from an earlier case that's at the police locker? Or is it one rogue cop or is it multiple cops, right? Guys who have pledged to protect and serve, who somehow have decided to not investigate an actual murder and to actually plant instead the bones of the victim on Stephen Avery's property, right? If you believe Avery was framed, make it credible for us. Tell us then how the murder was committed. I hope you do so in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.